Welcome back everybody, this is Brother Newton here today. We are finishing up our combat feat section videos. Uh, this is, God, what is this, number four for this section? Um, this is not all the videos for feats, just, just as a reminder, notice that feats like skill, focus, like we've grabbed up here, will be on another video. That is should be, hopefully, something I can cover all in one shot. Teasing it out is going to be difficult. I'll have to write it down on a piece of paper. Boy, that sounds like a lot of work, but I don't care. Uh, point is, is we're finishing uh, by talking about all these ones with the thumbs down. Now, now, don't let stuff like that discourage you when you are making a build. Uh, this is my first piece of advice to you. And routinely, the game has its own preset for you know stuff that it says, this is probably not for you. Bullshit. A fine example, and I know it has nothing to do with combat feats, but it is a good example, is if you grab spell focus in something and then greater spell focus in that same thing, like, say, necromancy, and then you grab spell focus and evocation just because, fuck it, I want to be an evoker as well. Uh, when you try to find greater spell focus for evocation, it's in a thumbs down category. Routinely, you will find that that happens. So they're like, well, you don't want another spell focus or greater spell focus. But who does that? Me, you jackass. Give me my fucking spell focus. So again, look for that stuff. You'll be surprised how often you're like, where is it? Did I not meet the requirements? Scroll all the way down. Look for that thumbs down category. Scroll all the way up. Finds the thumbs up category. Check those first. And that's routinely where I will find things. Uh, and again, it would be one of those where like, no, I want that, you jerk. And so again, take it, is my advice to you, if you already know that you want it, stuff like that. So let's talk about these ones. We don't have much to talk about, but that doesn't mean it won't take me two hours. Uh, what we got? We got ag Agile Maneuvers. Uh, you've learned to use your quickness and place of brute force when performing combat maneuvers. This is, again, if you're doing any kind of CMB. Uh, it doesn't say anything about CMD, so Combat Maneuver Defense. This may not be applicable. Remember, oh, and actually, I take that back. This isn't necessary for CMD because CMD, you do get to use your dexterity. So this is basically now giving your dexterity bonus back, including your strength bonus, or sorry, instead of your strength bonus, for those combat maneuvers. So routinely, it's only strength. Uh, in this case, you're swapping them out. So this is, again, kind of like uh, weapon finessing for combat maneuvers. If you want to think of it that way, that's probably the best analogy I got for you. Is this worth it? Again, I can't tell you. But this makes things like the trip maneuver better for those people that are like, well, I'm dexterous, I'm not strength-based, I got everything that I needed to get trip, but I suck at it because my strength is like an 8. Well, agile maneuvers can solve that problem. And again, notice as far as prerequisites, it just requires that you have one of those combat maneuvers. Bull rush, dirty trick, disarm, sunder armor, or trip. And I don't remember if it's sunder armor or just sunder. Point is, though, it's, it's in there somewhere. Uh, and again, those are your combat maneuvers that they're referring to. And notice that uh, on that list, by the way, Dirty Trick is the only one that gives you like three options. When you get Dirty Trick, you have three things that you can do with it. You can entangle someone, you can blind someone temporarily, and then another thing that I can't remember. Uh, but those, uh, as far as versatility is why I bring that up, because there's three different things that you get to do there, that's not bad. Notice, um, that's an odd way... Uh, and I hadn't really thought of this before. This is an odd way of doing things that I wouldn't normally consider on a non-strength build, like bull rush. How the hell do you bull rush someone with a high dexterity? Well, apparently agile maneuvers is the way to go here. It's a lot of investment where, it, it's, again, it's a lot like uh, a melee character who's strength-based, where literally power attack is damn near all you need, where, again, if you're a uh, dex-based melee character, you need two feats. You need piranha strike or power attack if you can get it. But you also need weapon finesse, so you can hit. So this is falls under that same vein of it's a feat just because I want dex based. <sighs> Again, on a build that has extra feats to spare, like a fighter, uh, you know, uh, uh, rangers too. Uh, how about um, magus in some cases? This could be okay. But it's still one of those where I've never been really a fan of these combat maneuvers. The only two that again always tickle my fancy, so to speak, is trip because you visually get to see it. Same with bulwarks because you visually get to see it. And I still wouldn't, would not wrap my brain around, I mean, let's just say this, and I hate this as an excuse, but it's still an excuse for me. I don't see how, you know, being super dexterous allows you to bore somebody. So I could not make myself take that, even if it was OP as hell. I'd still be like, how the fuck does that make any sense, man? I'm agile, so you fall back 30 feet. What? How the, what? Bullshit. You're like five pounds. So, you know, it just... Shit like that breaks the immersion for me, I guess would be the way to say it. Uh, moving on. Uh, Allied Spellcaster knows the teamwork feat. We don't need it to talk about it because we've talked about it already in a previous video, so we're going to skip by it. Uh, our arcane Armor Training and Mastery. knows I, I skipped around a little bit for this one, but this is nothing more than a 10% removing Arcane Spellier from any armor. 
in Kingmaker, and they may have patched this out back in the day anyway in Kingmaker, this would work on shields. So you could uh, sword and board it with nothing but uh, monk robes or whatever on as a wizard and literally be able to use things like a buckler or a uh, light shield. Uh, same with this one here. We could, you could get all the way up, I think, to like heavy shield with a 20%. Because he's stacked. It's 10% and 10% more. So this replaces the 10% in the, the tooltip it tells you here. So basically it just jumps it up to 20%. It's probably just a better way of phrasing it that way. But you need this one to grab that one. And again, notice that it doesn't require anything other than intelligence, which again, you would have. Uh, again, arcane armor training uh, doesn't imply that you have intelligence because remember, there's other arcane casters in the game. However, most of those guys don't have this issue. The bards being one of the examples that I'm thinking of. Uh, Magus being another one. So again, this is wasted on certain builds. Just be real clear. If you're getting a sorcerer, if you're getting a wizard, probably a witch falls in this category, I'd imagine. Ar Arcanist probably as well. Those would be the arcane casters that, that uh, would benefit from having these things. And again, can are these necessary? No. Are, are they useful? Sure. If you want to have like a chain shirt, uh, I want to say it's a 20% arcane spell failure for a chain shirt. Having Well, here, let's just do the math on this. So it's easier to do some of these calculations for the earlier armors. If you have light armor proficiency, which you can get, by the way, with a background feat. Where the hell are you at? Right here. And get you a background feat that gives you uh, light armor proficiency. So again, you, you may say, I don't want to burn a feat on that, too. That's just dumb as hell. And I would agree. But you don't have to. So again, really nice for that. Um, but... Uh, if you had light armor proficiency, but you couldn't use it because, again, it would cause arcane spell failure. Maybe you just did, like, a, a level dip in fighter to get the Eldritch Knight. And it feels weird to be an Eldritch Knight wearing fucking robes. And I agree. Something I always thought was weird is that Eldritch Knights just don't get this for free. Or, honestly, they should have made this the requirement. At least this one. Pick it up so that you can be an Eldritch Knight. Along with, you know, the martial weapon proficiency. I could see that. Because to me, that would, I, as a DM, I would have, have made that a rule. Or, or even, not even made that a rule. That would have been like the first feat that you get for being an Eldritch Knight. That you get Arcane Armor training, you know, the 10% one for free. Because you're training with padded armor, which is 5% penalty, uh, Arcane Spell Failure. So you could wear that with this feat and not have any problems. Leather Armor would be 10%. And again, you could wear uh, that with this uh, feat and have still no problems. Studded leather goes up to 15, and then chain shirt, which is the highest one of the, the light armor classes in this game, uh, is 20. Having said that, the exception to the rule on everything in, is invoked here, and that's with your chain shirt, since it's made of metal. You can get armor made of mithril, which is a metal that's extremely light. Because of that, uh, for armor's sake, uh, it allows you to do a variety of things. But the big take home here is it also lowers arcane spell failure by, I want to say, 10%. So now get yourself a chain shirt, not chain mail, chain shirt, uh, which is light armor, and get it uh, where it's mithril, uh, and then have this feet. And it'll, again, they work in tandem. So the armor is immediately knocked down to 10%, and then this will take the other 10% away. So with one feat and a, a good choice of armor, you can have the equivalent of mage armor on your character, and then some, because if it's mithril, chances are it's also mithril plus something, right? So it's better than mage armor. So you can already see the appeal of stuff like this. Now, in Kingmaker, I would tout that as being a solid choice for those casters that are like, you know, I don't want to waste my, my time with mage armor. Or maybe you just know that there's some light armor in the game that's pretty fucking baller. Leathers uh, in Kingmaker, for example, there's some that... Uh, when you get hit, which is always a bad thing, uh, there's a, a good piece of, of leather armor out there that if you get hit, every time you get hit, or maybe it's crit, one of the two, um, you automatically, the, the armor give, grants you greater invisibility for two rounds. So that's like solid protection right there. It's like, fuck, you just got hit. Oh, Jesus, Whoop, I'm invisible. And again, it's greater invis, so you can attack, you can cast spells, you can do all that fucking shit that you would do with your own greater invisibility spell on your character but only for two rounds, that's still good. That's a good way to GTFO, like, oh, shit, I didn't need to be here. Whoa. You know, buck the fuck out. So you can see the appeal for some uh, characters that would be like, you know, robes are great. Don't get me wrong. They got really good robes in Kingmaker. I'm assuming the same in this one. But let's just fucking say it. Y you really have a hard time replacing a good piece of armor. So, again, even if it's magical leather... Where, again, this and leather is good enough, and it will not be an arcane spell failure because of this one feat. You can get leather plus five, I assume, everywhere uh, in Kingmaker, 
eventually. Same in this game, I'd imagine, as well. What is that? That's like 7 armor class. And it does not really impede your dexterity all that much. Padded, of course, being the best out of that list. Robes, of course, being better than all of it. Uh, but the point's still the same. There's very few robes that give you armor. So having this on a, an arcane caster that has that issue, I could see this making the cut. When would I get it? Well, again, when are you going to get your light armor training? When do you find that mithril chain shirt or that leather plus whatever that you wanted to wear? And then that's when I would be like, yeah, I got an extra feet time to, to dip into this. Would I go both? Well, let's talk about both. So again, 10% versus 20%. Obviously, you can see the appeal. You can wear even better armors. I don't need, for example, a chain shirt that's mithril. But what would that mean for the medium armor classes? Remember, chain shirt was 20%. What about the other guys? I can't remember the numbers on them. Uh, off the top of my brain, I suppose I could gift them to myself, but I don't want to. So let's just spitball. Assuming that the, 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 the way it worked for padded to leather to studded to chain shirt, they all went up by 5% each time. I assume that the others would do something similar. So let's just assume that things like hide, uh, so for medium armor, for those of you who don't know, that includes hide armor, which is not metal, obviously. Um, uh, you know, lost my train of thought. Scale mail, chain mail, and breastplate being the best uh, of those, in my opinion, um, for a variety of reasons. But assuming that that's the order that they go up, uh, I would assume that'd be 25, 30, 35, 40 percent. And again, I'm spitballing here, guys. I'm just going off of not even memory at this point. I'm just guessing. But let's just assume that that's accurate. 40 percent, that's a biggie for breastplate. And again, taking it down 20% more would be nice. Again, what does Mithril do? It lowers it uh, by, I want to say, 10%. So Breastplate Mithril is not going to be something you can wear even with Arcane Armor Mastery. Chain Mail, if that was the 30% or 35%, again, Mithril would take it down to about 25 and then both of these feats would take down another 20 so it would be 5% failure. That's 1 in 20 chance that your spell is just borked. And that sucks. You might say, I'm, I'm willing to take that. Uh, scale mail, assuming it's the 30%. Again, assuming here, because again, chain mail or, or scale mail, you could flip flop. I never remember which is better than the other. I think chain mail is the better of the two, so it'd probably be higher. Scale mail, if, assuming it's 30%, again, it's metal, so that you can make it mithril. Hide armor, obviously, you cannot. So 30% scale mail would drop down to 20% because it's mithril. If I'm doing my math on this right. So with Arcane Armor Training and Mastery now, you have to have two feats, you could wear Scale Mail. So that's medium armor now. But again, remember, you would need medium armor proficiency, which, again, you could do a variety of ways. A level dip in fighter. Again, I still am amazed that Eldritch Knight, even, even, sorry, getting on a high horse here, but even for an Eldritch Knight, if they don't give you this for free, like this one, for free, I'm surprised that Eldritch Knight just doesn't give you, you know, light, medium, heavy armor proficiency or like shield proficiency or just something like that. Because again, it says it in the fucking name, you're an Eldritch Knight. I've never seen an Eldritch Knight wearing nothing but fucking robes. It seems so stupid to me. So again, you could grab these and grab uh, higher levels of armor. Again, that fighter level dip to get you all your armor training and then grabbing these two things when you're a wizard or an Eldritch Knight proper so that you can literally wear, you know, mithril scale mail is a valid option. And again, scale mail is not bad. It's obviously better than a chain shirt for a variety of things. And it opens a lot of different doors. Now, remember what I've just told you here with grabbing this and this, you would be able to wear padded armor, leather armor, chain shirt, and scale mail. Notice that I've conveniently left out studded leather and I've left out um, hide armor, the, the lowest of the mediums. Why? Studded leather is, let's see, minus 5, minus 10, minus 15. No, studded leather would work because of this one. Studded leather would not work with this because it's 15% and this is 10. And there is no mithril studded leather because it's leather. Yes, the studded part might be mithril, but that's not going to do you any fucking good. So you would have to have both of these to get the, all of the light armors and only uh, chain shirt 5, 10, 15, 20... No, actually, chain shirt, you wouldn't even need it in mithril. If you grab both of these, you could grab any of the light armors. If you wanted mithril scale mail, you need to have this one. Let's say it that way. That would be the best way of saying it. 
And again, that opens a lot of doors. That's that's five different armor categories, not counting robes, which of course you always had access to. So now we've got six different things that you could put on and buff yourself. And remember, we're not just saying armor. And we're not just saying magical armor either. I'm not just saying you know that because, again, it could be a plus one, plus five. I mean the leather armor of fire immunity or the, the studded leather that makes you immune to poisons or the one that I told you about that when you get hit, you go invisible or you get the idea. There's a lot of bang for your buck in some of those armors. Some have spells baked into them, you know, like cast, you know, healing spell, like cure light wounds or cure minor wounds like three times a day for free or uh, immune to fatigue and exhaustion effects or you get the idea. So there's a lot of cool shit that you can get with some armor. Shit that just having mage armor will not do. Now, on that note, Kingmaker uh, would be a better reason for grabbing this stuff when you're playing Pathfinder, King, Pathfinder Kingmaker. In this game, however, I know that there is a mythic ability or feat, I forget what they're called, because there's two of them. There's mythic abilities and there's mythic feats. I just get them confused. But one of them is a, a feat, let's just call it that way, that says Archmage Armor uh, Mythic Ability. And that mythic ability means if you cast or get mage armor on yourself a variety of ways. You can cast it from a wand, a scroll, drink a potion, which are plentiful in this game. And for normal mage armor, it's plus four armor for one hour per caster level. With it's a potion, it's a one hour buff because it's caster level one. Still plenty. And they're fucking cheap. They're like 50 gold pieces or some shit. So you'll hoard those things and just run around just chugging those and not even slotting a mage armor potion or spell, in my opinion. But... If you do that, and you get that Archmage Armor ability from the Mythic stuff, uh, it adds one more armor per Mythic rank that you have. So at Mythic rank 10, your Arch, uh, your Mage Armor spell there we go, uh, will be, instead of plus 4, plus 14. So again, you can see you're not going to get armor even this way that's going to compete with a 14 armor class. Having said that, I hate grabbing Mythic abilities and feats that only impact one spell. This would be one of the exceptions to the rule because it's just so goddamn good. 14 extra armor man on a tune that doesn't get armor but like that plus four, that's a nice upgrade. And again, remember, we'll be real clear on this. Remember, this does nothing for your touch armor class. Remember, it's armor. Armor works for your main armor category and your t uh, flat-footed armor category. And again, 14 on the ear, flat-footed. That's a nice upgrade. Think of a, a, a Sword Saint build that I'm doing right now where they don't get armor, they get dodge. A lot of it. So they have good armor, terrible flat-footed armor, and really good touch armor class. So I have a hole, right? I have an armor class hole. What do we do with that? Again, spells like shield, spells like uh, mage armor. Again, he can't cast it, but he has wands, he has potions, as I've stated, scrolls too. And he could do that, and it would still benefit from that Archmage Armor Mythic ability. So I could get it up to that 14, throw another 4 on top of that with a shield spell, and now I'm at 18, and then everyone gets a base 10, so I'm at 28. Well, flat-footed, is that going to solve all my problems? Fuck no. But it's better. And again, there's other ways to make the touch, or the, sorry, the flat-footed armor to go up as well. Things like Natural Armor Enhancement, which is like a Barkskin spell or an amulet. Natural armor itself falls in this category. Deflection falls under every armor category. So again, ring of protection plus five or shield of faith, you know, that max setting. So it's like plus seven in this game. So again, variety of ways to make your armor go up. So you don't need these in this game. That doesn't mean you don't want them. Remember, none of that shit gave me immunity to fire or poison or made me better at stealthing or made me immune to fatigue or anything that those armors that you might find could give you. So my advice to you on this one is get it if you know again if you have light armor training minimum, get it, but get it late. You know, get it in the you know the eleven to twenty category. Why? Because certainly you would rather have the armor earlier. Earlier you got mage armor, you got shield spell, you got a variety of ways of buffing your character in a way that's still gonna be good enough for the earlier levels. And again, if you're that squishy dude, you're probably not meleeing early really that much anyway. Once you get armor, you know, you go fighter level one and then nine levels of wizard or whatever, and then unlock your Eldritch Knight whenever that happens. Once you dip into Eldritch Knight and you really feel like you should be meleeing, that would be when I would start dipping into this, if that was your cup of tea. But for me, I know me. I, I, I like at least one because just being able to wear a chain shirt that's mithril 
that has some properties on it is actually extremely valuable. I don't have to worry about potions or wands or scrolls anymore. I don't have to worry about do I have the ability to cast mage armor on myself. I don't have to slot it. Again, I have the armor. It's just there. And again, pretty good. And chain mail, or sorry, chain mail, chain shirt is for armor class just like mage armor. It impedes your dexterity is the problem. So again, you can only get like a dex bonus of plus four. But that's routinely where I'm at anyway, or less than that. Uh, in my earlier builds, because I usually have a dex of 16, that's a plus 3. So I'm still fine. I'm getting all that dex bonus. When I start getting dex gear, uh, where I'm, uh, my plus 3 goes to plus 4, which goes to plus 5, which maybe even goes up to plus 6 or plus 7, now we have problems. But the thing that I didn't tell you about Mithril, I said there's other things that it does besides this. This is one of the other things. Because it's Mithril, because it's light, the our armor check penalty goes down, uh, which means um, uh, you know when you wear armor impedes your movement and therefore things like athletics, mobility, and stealth are hampered. That penalty is lessened because it's mithril, because it's lighter. The other thing it does is the it increases, minorly, the amount of dexterity your character can have uh, given to them, or, or still retained, probably a better way of saying that, while wearing that armor. Because again, the bigger the armor, that's why you don't see you know dexterity, you know, 20 characters wearing plate mail. I'm sure it exists, but it's one of those where it's like, why? Because that dexterity is not being used to great effect anymore. Because the plate mail reduces how much dex you can have by a lot. There's ways around it. Fighters have ways around it. This is an example of how fighters get around it. Armor training. Notice this one here. Uh, increases the maximum dexterity bonus allowed by one. And that's every time they grab, it, grab that. So again, notice how here, this is the, the fourth and final one. Literally, I could wear full plate mail as a fighter and have a dexterity of 18, that's a plus 4, and get all that plus 4 while wearing plate mail because of this. If it was mithril, it would be even better. So you can see the point here. If I did that, uh, again, for a chain shirt, it's plus 4 normally. I'm not going deep into fighter. Maybe, again, I only need fighter level 1 to unlock Eldritch Knight easily. So, again, one level fighter, bunch of wizards, then Eldritch Knight, and again, you'd say, well, I don't get that nice plus one or plus four going to plus five or higher. Yes, but if it's a mithril shirt, uh, it goes from plus four to plus five or plus four to plus six, something like that. So it's a, a much better armor class. And again, at least more serviceable is my point. So this one's of value. Um, both of them, you'd really have to want scale mail. Let's just fucking say it. You'd really have to want and find a good piece of scale mail or other armor. Uh, I should throw this last caveat here before we move on. Um, you'd really have to want to find another piece of armor that, that the arcane spell failure would be 20%, where getting this would now take that away. Is there other armor besides the scale mail, the mithril scale mail, that could do that? Yes, there is named, just like weapons in the game, there's named armors in the game. And some of those named armors, like chain mail, uh, instead of being the mithril version that would knock it down to 25%, for whatever reason, they've extra special crafted and they're knocking it down to 20%. So there is chain mail shirts, or sorry, chain mail period in the game, in Kingmaker anyway, that is a 20% arcane spell failure. There's probably even a breastplate out there that's a 20% arcane spell failure, where again, if you just have these feats, these two feats, and the ability to wear it, of course, you know, medium armor training, you can put on that breastplate and not have no spell failure. And breastplate's a a big armor bump. It's like plus six naturally. Uh, and then you put magic on top of that, right? Because it's probably magical if it's mithril. So maybe it's a plus three, plus four, plus five, even if you're lucky. So it's six and five. That's 11 armor right there. So you're at 21 right now. Because remember, when it gets base 10, then you throw in the fact that it gets some dexterity. And you do have dexterity. Even if you didn't have dexterity, you still have dexterity belts. So you put that on, and you're already now pushing your 21 armor up into the 23s, 24s, maybe. Then you throw on a shield spell, which would totally work here. Now you're into the 28s, 29s maybe. Uh, you got other spells besides and arena you know, protections and, and, and uh, bark skin spells and whatnot. And suddenly your armor can be well into the 40s. So again, for a wizard that can get well into the 40s with a, a really kick-ass piece of breastplate or chain mail shirt for that matter, or chain mail, I keep saying that wrong, chain mail for that matter, getting both of these could be of value. I, I still think it's kind of weird to invest heavily in the I get armor and it doesn't fuck me over. Uh, the fact that as a fighter dip, I get armor proficiency for free, that, that's a big selling point right there. If I didn't get this for free, or even if it was light armor for free, I would never get into these things, because burning a feat on getting light armor training 
and then burning a feat to grab that so I could use that light armor training. That's a lot of feats just burnt for no good goddamn reason. Just cast the spell on you and you're fine. But if you're getting it for free already, getting this one is not that bad. Getting both of them, you really want that shit. You really have to convince me you found some kick-ass armor that you know you're going to give to this character. Because chances are there's someone else on your party that can use that armor and doesn't suffer from arcane spell failure. Like a cleric, for example, or just a straight-up fighter that would benefit from having that badass armor being lighter. Means they don't get encumbered as fast. They can sprint longer. They don't get fatigued. So there's plenty of reasons to let them have it. And you just cast your spells. But, again, as an Eldritch Knight, it feels weird not to at least have something like this and like a chain shirt that's mithril on, right? Just saying. So, again, of value, good. Is it great? Eh. It, it'll save your ass from arcane spell failure if you do it right. But, uh, again, you could have done that with robes. Clustered shots. Uh, deadly aim. Let's grab all the ranged attacks. So, notice we have snapshot, rapid shot, improved snapshot, greater snapshot. Deadly aim cluster shot. These are all ranged attacks. And again, this character, just for frame of reference, is a fighter that's level 17 strength, level dexterity of 17 as well. It could go either way. You're a dex-based build and a strength-based build. I gave you equal rights here. And they're saying, you don't want range shit. The fuck I don't. Why? why? Remember, if that's a, a composite longbow that I'm wielding as a fighter, which you could totally do, that strength being 17 is still applicable. That's still useful. I'm getting extra damage on my strikes with that bow. So this could totally be a bowman. The fact that they give you a thumbs down kind of pisses me off. It's like, really, dude? You, you don't know me. Who the fuck are you to tell me not to grab ranged attacks? And fighters make good rangers. Rangers are better-ish. Eh, but there's a lot of shit you can do with a fighter that you can't do with a ranger. Yeah, the ranger gets spells. I'm going to get spells. Everyone that's mythic in this game that's a main character gets spells. So don't let that guide you. Just look at your fighter and say, hey, do you want to have 10 feats and 11 more feats? Do you want to have full plate armor and still be you know, swinging a bow like a goddamn champion? Do you want to have stuff that unlocks your ability with bows to be fucking amazing? Let's see if I can find it for you. Where is it? Uh, there's cross bows. Here's bows. Weapon training bows. Plus one to your attack and your damage, and you can get that multiple goddamn times. So that's a plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, and that's before you throw in the magic. That's a really nice bowman, right? Just saying, there's some fucking good here. And then you got other stuff in here that can add to it in your advanced weapon training and shit. So you have uh, things like... Oh no, fighter's reflexes, better reflexes, tactics. So again, you get the, the equivalent of solo tactics like we saw with our um, Inquisitor build that we talked about not too long ago when we talked about teamwork feats. Uh, trained initiative, a bonus to your initiative. Again, you're already presumably a dex-based character as a, a bowman. But again, more initiative is always better. And again, we talked about that already. This is a really nice. And how, how does this work? Uh, all our bonuses with our weapon, this plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four down here at the very end, uh, gets added to our initiative. So it starts off at plus one, builds up to plus four eventually. And that stacks, by the way, with improved initiative, another feat that you'd probably grab. So again, you're looking at, like, by the end of your build, a plus eight minimum to your initiative check. I assume you have dexterity, which why wouldn't you as a bowman? That's going to be even higher. You're really going to be high on the totem pole for when it comes to the first round. Who goes first? Probably you. So is that a value? Hell yeah, that's a value. I could see that being extremely fun. So again, you could have some serious fun being a bowman as a fighter. Don't let the fact that rangers, it's in the name. Yeah, bullshit. Fighters can still do shit good. And fighters have a lot more fun going for them too with the, the weirdy, uh, weirdy, the weird ass armor shit they get to do. And notice, of course, weapon mastery is something that I don't think a ranger gets. I could be wrong on this. Notice how this, a fighter chooses one weapon, such as a longsword, great axe, or longbow, hell, they even say it in the tooltip. Any attacks made with that weapon that could crit, automatically crit. That's fucking money. So when you roll that nat 20, they don't roll again. They just, nope, you crit. Good job. And bows, especially like some of those composites, I want to say have like a, a times three modifier on the crit. Well, keep reading. Your modifier actually goes up another number. So if it's times two, it's times three now. If it's times three, like I just said, I think it is, it's now times four. That's a really heavy hit and fucking bowman right there. I'm just saying. In addition, you cannot be disarmed while wielding a weapon of this type. So again, some, no one can take your bow away from you. Fucking awesome. Now, yeah, that's the end of the build. But there's some fun to be had here. So let's talk about these range ones. Let's, we'll do the snapping shot one separate. So let's talk about rapid shot, cluster shot, deadly aim. Those are the three that the, are the normal ones to me. Rapid shot, we've talked about this before when we talked about mini shot, which for whatever reason, mini shot's up in the, the normal category up here. Rapid shot, 
which you need to get many shot way the fuck down here in the thumbs down category i have no idea what that makes any sense what does this do well first notice it gives you access to many shot improved snapshot which again we'll talk about here in a minute and rapid shot mythic which is amazing we will definitely want that in your build but generically speaking what does rapid shot do it literally allows you if you're doing a full attack which means you're, you're shooting you're shooting you're shooting some more with any ranged weapon that is bombs yes you heard right bombs that is uh javelins that is darts that is any ranged weapon you can equip not ray spells it allows you to Take a minus two penalty to all your attacks in that combat round, but giving you one extra full attack, uh, which means full base attack bonus. So if you had a base attack bonus at the end of the build that's 20, you're at an extra shot. So normally you would get for a bowman, let's say you would get a plus 20, a plus 15, a plus 10, and a plus 5 for your four attacks. Okay, With rapid shot on, they would all drop down by two. So it would be 18, uh, 13, 8 and three but there would be another 18 in there because rapid shot gets you an extra shot now why is that not amazing it is it also unlocks many shot remember many shot we talked about the other day requires you use a bow so don't con you know, confuse that fact that you're like i got rapid shot so i can get many shot with my crossbow it does not work works for bows and composite bows that's it to be real clear on that, it has nothing to do with rapid shot, but again, it's something that I get rapid shot because, and then I see prerequisite many shot. Oh, yes, please. No, only if you're a bowman. You have to use bows. So be real clear on that. Right, the other reason this is important is because that minus two penalty, that's what rapid shot mythic gives you, is it takes away that minus two penalty now. Fucking amazing, right? Get all of those attacks, an extra free attack, and no penalty to it. Yes, please. You can see how a bowman can really crush some shit. So rapid shot's nice. Another reason not to get it, and I don't know if this is a reason, but it's important. Uh, the Zen Archer, we talked about this the other day, but just as a reminder, the Zen Archer gets flurry of bows where he can literally shoot multiple times, much like Rapid Shot does, but without a penalty because that's the kind of monk that he is. And he gets not only an extra attack, later on in his build, if he stays a purist, he'll get two extra attacks with that flurry of bows, which is fucking awesome. It does not stack with Rapid Shot, and therefore you don't want it. Having said that, in that video, I also pointed out that if you don't get many shot for free as a Zen Archer somehow, remember, Rapid Shot is a requirement for it. You can grab Rapid Shot, just don't turn it on. Grab many shot then as a feat. And I, again, I hate that as an argument because you're, I'm giving you a feat to grid another feat. And I hate that because that's the only reason at that point to grab Rapid Shot. If you're not going to get many shot for free, you kind of want it. So you... Uh, uh, inside not for free if you if you can't get many shot without meeting that prerequisite for rapid shot you have to grab rapid shot then grab many shot and then never turn this on as a zen archer because it's it's wasteful it's stupid it's a penalty to your swing and it gives you exactly the same thing but you do not need to have rapid shot on to get many shot as far as i know all you need to do is shoot with a bow as a full attack and that first arrow that hits splits into two arrows so the first arrow hits it does damage damage but you gotta love that so again, something that if the Zen Archer can't get that naturally, you would have to do this and this as a pick. And then just never turn that on. And that should work. It's weird and I hate it. But I think they probably have a monk feat that allows them to pick many shot for, for a monk feat. Not for free, but as a, a choice. And not have to meet that prerequisite. And that would be cool if that's the case. I just never looked into it. Um, but rapid shot for everyone else, solid choice. And again, it doesn't matter if you're a bowman or not. Or you're just a ranged attacker just not a ray spell attacker and rapid shots amazing uh notice as far as prerequisites nothing you just need to be a, a humanoid so intelligence of three so that's not bad uh what else you got um uh, deadly aim the next most obvious one and again uh, i usually hem and haw over which one to grab first because there is no prerequisite for a uh, rapid shot i can grab it early there is a prerequisite for deadly aim uh, but again both are penalties as we'll see so a minus two from rapid shot and then you throw in another minus one up to a minus six, depending on the kind of build you have for deadly aim on top of that. That's a lot of fuck you for your ability to hit with those shots. Adds a lot of damage. Basically, deadly aim is nothing more than power attack, but with like ranged attacks. And again, ranged weapon attacks, be real clear here. The downside, I should have pointed this out with rapid shot too. The downside with these two, or at least back in Kingmaker, and I think at least one of these has this issue, if not both. You leave these on, these are toggles. You leave these on and you start casting ray spells, you will be at a penalty to your swing and it doesn't give you an extra ray spell and it doesn't give you extra damage. 
so fucking shut them off. But that should not be a thing to me. That should be a bug report. Why? I mean, if you're not giving me damage, then this should not be counted, right? So don't give me the penalty and then give me no damage. If you want to give me the damage, hey, I'll take the damage. My race spells will be amazing. But if not, then then these should be put on a, a, a left on for your build because again, there's reasons to want these on all the time so you don't forget to turn them on, and they should not impede your race spell casting. To me. So I would bug report that shit if I were you guys. Um, that's something that the devs probably won't even care about. But it's, it, it's something that cares about to me. And again, there's reasons to want that because there is a, a Raycaster build that I like to use for an Eldritch Archer. And they would get Rapid Shot. They would get Deadly Aim. They would get Mini Shot. They would get all these ranged attack things we're talking about today. And they have Ray Spells besides. Normally, those guys can shoot Ray Spells through their ranged weapon. Their bow, the javelin, the crossbow, you know, whatever. So again cool so i don't mind leaving these toggles on because again i'm still going to shoot with my bow chop 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 and i'm going to cast a spell first then shoot it through the arrow bam major damage and then arrow to the face arrow to the face arrow to the face so i don't mind leaving these on for that guy because it's not impeding my spell casting because remember that minus two from rapid shot and the minus four let's say from deadly aim that's still there but that's for my bow strikes because the spell is not striking the spell is being cast into the ranged weapon the ranged weapon now has to hit. So again, I don't mind that being a penalty. So that's not a bug to me. But there is times for the Eldritch Archer, and same with other Magus, where you want to shoot with the race spell, not through the weapon. Why? Ranged touch attacks are easier to hit the target. Weapon attacks have all that beautiful armor to fucking penetrate. Now there's ways around that, but the point is if you don't have a way around that, there's times where I'm like, I can't hit this motherfucker with my bow and arrow and then therefore my race spells are useless because I'm shooting them through the bow and arrow. Well, shut off what's called spell strike. It's called range spell strike for the Elder Charger, but basically shut that off, keep spell combat on, that's another toggle that Amegas has, and you will still be able to cast a spell at a penalty, minus two to your swing, but I think that swing actually only works for melee. So again, the Elder Charger gets it like in spades, they're fucking awesome. You can cast your race spell, pew, shoot them in the face, and then draw your bow and still shoot, 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 at penalty, of course, if you have Deadly Aim and Rapid Shot on. But again, if you have Rapid Shot and Deadly Aim on like you should for using your bow, that again will penalize your Ray spell now because you're shooting it at, as an actual Ray spell. And I don't want to have a minus six to that attack. The whole point of me shooting you with the Ray spell and not shooting through the bow was so that I could hit you. Well, now you just gave me a minus six penalty, goddammit. I don't want that. So again, you can see the problem. So I would report that shit simply because, again, if it fixes it, it makes a lot more builds a lot more viable. But just know that that's an issue. But Deadly Aim, again, that's all it really does. For every minus one to your swing, it's a plus two to your damage. There's no way to make that better except for uh -huh, Deadly Aim Mythic, which, of course, is a thing. Deadly Aim Mythic behaves like Power Attack or Piranha Strike Mythic. Same deal. Minus one, plus two, now becomes minus one, plus three. There is no plus four, no plus five for you. Uh, so, no, that's a thing. But again, uh, on a fighter build, dead, or a ranger, and someone that's a high bat, 20, that's a minus 6 plus 12 with deadly aim mythic, that would be minus 6 plus 18 per arrow. You can see the appeal. So again, solid choice. You do want it if you're a ranged weapon shooting son of a bitch. Now, Clustered shots, before we get into the snapshot stuff. Clustered shots. This one is the one that, again, I'm, I'm routinely touting as, again, amazing. This is the one that made Ekandayo a goddamn monster. Besides the rapid shot and deadly aim and the many shot and all the other cool shit that you gave him. This thing here was what was allowing him to drop really tough opponents. Why? Because what this one does is if opponent has damage reduction, so that's a big if, but if an opponent has damage reduction and you shoot him multiple times in one round with your ranged weapon, Again, notice how it says range weapon. That doesn't say bow. doesn't say crossbow. So if you're a dart guy, I guess. Weird. But you could. If you're javelin, again, you could. Bombs should work. I haven't tested this. But watch this shit. You do all your shots to one dude first. After you do damage, 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 they add up all those numbers. Subtract the damage reduction once and once only. And then the rest of the damage goes through. What does that mean? If you had damage reduction 10, and I couldn't penetrate it, let's just say. 
uh, I don't have like the magic thing that would penetrate it. So you have damage reduction 10. I'm shooting you with the bow and I do 5, 10, 15 damage. What damage did I actually do? Because your damage reduction, I did 0 for the first hit because 5 minus 10 is you know, obviously less than 0, but 0 is the lowest you can go. You don't heal the guy from your sh shots, thank God. But you do 0 damage, then the 10, when they did 10 damage, again, didn't penetrate it either. It also did 0 damage. So I did nothing, nothing, even though I hit you. Motherfucker. Then I did the 15 by pure dumb luck somehow. Maybe I crit. I don't know. But I did 15, and now 15 minus 10, I did 5 whopping points of damage, even though I hit you 3 fucking times. Fuck that. What does Cluster Shot do? Add them all up. 5, 10, and 15 is 30. Then subtract the 10 once and once only. So I did 20 damage now. You can see how Ekin was suddenly a monster, but only again with damage reduction opponents, which again is going to be a thing in this game. I mean, was in Kingmaker 2. It is annoying as fuck to come across guys that are just sucking up all your damage. So having something like Cluster Shots, which is arguably one of the easier ones to get. You have Point Blank Shot. You have Precise Shot. You are a ranged attacker. How can you not grab those two things? It's clearly important. So you got both of those. Cluster Shot for a ranged attacker like a Ranger, like Ekandaya was, or a fighter like this character is, can be picked up at level 6 right fucking here. That's amazingly good at that early of a level. So let's path out, let's just say by level 6, if I'm a purist fighter, okay, and not a human, let's just say I got one feet here, one feet here, this feet, that feet, that feet, that feet, that feet. I'm a normal non-human fighter, and I want to be a ranged attacker. What feats would I grab? So let's, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven feats. Let's see if we can make you an awesome build by level 6. You would want to have things like point blank shot, precise shot right off the bat. Because if you're going to be a ranged attacker, do you want to shoot into melee combat at a minus four? I know I don't. So one, two, that's covered. Then you're going to get something like rapid shot or deadly aim, your choice. Again, I can't tell you what to grab. I'd probably grab deadly aim first simply because it does more damage. But again, rapid shot, two shots is better than one shot. We can all agree on that. But it's a minus two penalty to your swing, whereas this early levels is only a minus one and plus two to your damage. So I'd probably still take Deadly Aim, but that's number three. Then I'd get Rapid Shot, that's four. Then I could get, um, oh shit, I lost my train of thought. Uh, what am I missing? Uh, you get like Weapon Focus Bow, Weapon Specialization Bow, and again, you're a fighter, so those things uh, are easy to get. Weapon Focus, anyone can get. Weapon Specialization, you need Fighter Level Four to get, and we a Weapon Focus which we just picked up. So again, now we're doing an extra plus one to our swing, plus two to our damage, and then at level six, you can get cluster shots. Boom, you're done. Could you grab more shit? Yeah, I'm about to show you more shit. Snapshot, improved snapshot, greater snapshot, and improved precise shot was something that we talked about the other day. Blind fight, improved blind fight, greater blind fight, uh, again, are all solid choices. And there's other shit that we still could have grabbed, like I want to say Hammer the Gap, which we talked about like two videos ago. This last one is like the last one on that video. Notice how this one specifically says search tag damage melee range. It talks about a full attack against the target. And notice in the picture, it shows a picture of what looks like a blade, like a sword or a short sword, and arrows. So again, hammer the gap should work for ranged attacks. So if you're a bowman, you can get that one. Again, what does that do for a full attack? Every time you hit that motherfucker, the first hit doesn't do anything special. The second hit, you know, consecutive hit, has, can't be missed. So you hit once, nothing happens. You hit the second time, you get a plus one to the damage. You hit a third time, you get a plus two to that damage. You get a fourth time, you get a plus three to that damage. You get the idea. It just keeps stacking on itself. Now imagine your ability to hit multiple times thanks to things like many... Oh, I forgot many shot. You could have grabbed many shot in there. Sorry. I knew there was something else. But again, weapon specialization is still a solid choice. You can pick it up later. But get what, weapon focus, many shot. I'm oh, sorry. Ugh. Get weapon focus, many shot, and then get... Um, uh, clustered shot and then get some of these other things we've been talking about you can make a really strong bowman by level six new problem and again you know ticking all the boxes of you're, you're good at hitting and you're doing good damage all the things that you would want so again easy peasy in my mind to make a good ranged attacker especially on a fighter that obviously a ranger too hell there's a good subclass of paladin which i've been toying around with that get like precise shot for free at level one and they don't even have to have point blank shot which seems weird i'd still probably grab it but they get precise shot for free at level one just hand it to them doesn't matter if you're human or not so imagine being a non-human paladin like an azimer where you get only one feet up here well you get point blank shot obviously and then down here you got precise shot for free 
and that's a paladin level one, and it's uh, uh, called Divine Hunter, and they still get their, their lay on hands and all that cool channeling healing ability and all the fucking immunity to disease and fear and blah, 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 spell casting besides. And they're quite cool. So imagine being that, that holy warrior sent down from heaven, you know, your, your, your mom and dad knocking boots from, you know, an angel or whatever, and now you're born, you're an Asimer, got a cool little halo, and you got your magic bow, and you're out there just, you know, fucking shooting dudes left and right and healing people besides. It's, it's kind of a fun build. It's not a ranger doesn't feel even like a ranger it feels like it is a divine hunter which is pretty fucking cool and again that's another way that you could have taken this build and, and, and got yourself some decent bow skills and again on that remember some of the ones again are specific to bows you know, longbow shortbow doesn't matter composite longbow shortbow doesn't matter but not a crossbow not a javelin not a sling staff not a dart not a any number of other things that i'm forgetting so again be real clear on those tool tips for some stuff but rapid shot works for all of them which is really nice deadly aim works for all of them which again is really nice so again you can have some serious fun uh for those interested before we go into snapshot um rapid shot and deadly aim um be real clear on these ones rapid shot like that extra attack we were talking about that totally works uh know that if you do a javelin or a dart these are thrown weapons of course, there's a, a throwing weapons feat, but we didn't actually cover it because it wasn't on our list. It's weird because it's clearly a, a combat one. It'll be one that we talk about in the next video, the last video for feats. So it falls in this category, weirdly. But it is a clear and obvious attack one. Why it doesn't show up in our thing, I don't know uh, as, as a combat feat, but it, it's not labeled a combat feat for whatever reason, even though it's clearly used only in combat. But those are thrown weapons, and throw anything is the feat I'm thinking of. I don't think that works for them. Because it's a plus one to your throw, but it's a plus one to your throw, but only for things that are not supposed to be thrown. It's hard to explain. We're, we're talking things like holy water, acid flask, and alchemist fire is what we're talking about. Uh, they get a, my phone agrees. They get a, a bonus. Having said that, um, there's reasons to want to go rapid shot in a thrown weapon because you can also surprise go two weapon fighting and equip a javelin and a javelin or a dart and a dart and a whatever and a whatever you get the idea ranged thrown weapons like that can be dual equipped so routinely uh if i play like an alchemist especially like a grenadier you can grab rapid shot which is awesome uh, and you can because you're probably going to switch when you're not throwing bombs you're probably switching to like a crossbow but you could go javelin javelin and go two weapon fighting so that you can get extra attacks with that javelin because it will work on that main hand weapon and rapid shot would be a penalty to your swing, but there's ways around that. And deadly aim would work for both hands, for both javelin tosses. So you can see the fun here. But there's more to it than that. The reason you do that, for those of you that don't know, your thrown bombs, there is a, a, a feat that you get as you level up your alchemist, if you have bombs. Uh, so we'll the section don't get this. Uh, but everyone else that has bombs in the, under the alchemist class or subclass, uh, can get something called fast bombs the way fast bombs works is for every attack you could have had with your weapon so again let's switch to a crossbow you get one attack and then maybe two then maybe three by the end of your build maybe four if you have haste on you so you get four attacks pow 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 because of fast bombs it takes those four attacks and allows you to throw upwards of four bombs assuming you have four still to throw because remember, you burn through them real quick. So instead of just throwing a bomb and your turn's over, no, it's bomb, 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 bomb. And you gotta love that, right? Well, wait. If you're two-weapon wielding javelins or darts or some other thrown weapon, like throwing axes, you can do that and have rapid shot on. And with fast bombs on, which is a toggle, you could literally throw upwards of, what is that, three, six, seven maybe eight bombs in a combat round there might be a way to go more but i think eight is a solid number i can get you eight bombs sunshine think about how much damage jubilos did back in the day in kingmaker with just one of them fucking amazing bombs of his think about his bombs that has an effect besides damage like it knocks them down or curses them or entangles them or whatever and they're always making the check because again you hit them once and they're like ah, i could pass that probably and they probably do you suck well throw it eight times at them in one combat round and there's a check each fucking time damage 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 entangled ha ah, ha fuck you dick eventually you're gonna fail it so again some fun to be had here outside what you would consider the typical okay 
So that's rapid shot, deadly aim, and all the other ones we just talked about. Clustered shots, again, amazing. Uh, for ranged weapons, again, uh, ignoring that damage. Again, totally something that on a ranged build where, I mean, that was my thing. Not just like my wizard that I told you about where that's why I play a human and I get two feats and I go point blank shot, precise shot. That's not a ranged attacker. That is just someone that needs those to be a ranged attacker because he don't want to get in the melee. That's not a ranged attacker. That's not what I mean. I mean someone that's going to be invested in using a bow, a crossbow, a javelin, a, a bomb, whatever. That's a ranged attacker to me, to be real clear. Uh, moving on. Uh, before we go into these other ones, let's talk about the other ones that are ranged stuff, like Snapshot, Improved Snapshot, and Greater Snapshot. These are new feats. These are not ones that were in Kingmaker, as far as I remember, anyway. I, I never saw them until this game came out. Now, maybe they're in there, they've patched them in, I just didn't see it. But I haven't played it in a while, and chances are this is all new to this game. So let's read up here on what Snapshot does. Notice it's a heavy investment. Point blank shot, precise shot. You're already going to have that. Bab of six, that's just like our clustered shot. So again, late in build-ish, you know, late, depending on who you're playing. As a fighter or ranger, it's not that late. But for anyone else, uh, remember, if I'm an Eldritch Archer, for example, that could want this, I probably would, it's level eight at the earliest because that's when I get a Bab of six. So probably for me, closer to nine, that sucks. But again, is it worth it? Let's find out. So what does Snapshot do? While wielding a ranged weapon our bow, probably, you threaten squares within your melee reach. You can make attacks of opportunity with a ranged weapon. Normally you cannot. You do not, keep reading, provoke attacks of opportunity when making a ranged attack as an attack of opportunity. Why is that important? Normally, let's say this is you, this is the guy you're shooting, you're within melee distance of that motherfucker, and again, something happens that would allow me to do an attack of opportunity. Like he tries to walk away. I shoot him. Normally, because I'm shooting and he's within melee striking distance, he would fucking attack of opportunity. Or maybe that's just his friend. He would attack of opportunity. Why? Because I'm using a ranged attack at melee range. Now, there is a way around that, and I routinely, on a ranged build, build for it. It's called Point Blank Master. We've talked about it before. I routinely grab it on Raycaster builds. Point is, though, it could be something you can grab on a bow, a crossbow, a javelin, a bomb, whatever. Or you're just doing your range thing all up and in their grill. This one, on the other hand, doesn't have that penalty. So while Point Blank Master, which is a heavy investment, I still am going to get it. This thing is just cool. It just works. It's just not a problem. So again, just free attacks for you. So how could this be bad? It can't be. The question is... Are you comfortable enough, though, to have your ranged attacker up and in the thick of things? Now, grain of salt here, there's other reasons that you are in melee range as a ranged attacker. They charge you. You're in the back fucking rank. Let's just say it. Are you leaving someone there to sword and board protect your ass? Probably not, right? Especially on, like, turn base, you're probably not doing that shit. You have the front rank up on front. It's one of the reasons people hate that there's no real good taunt in this game so you can't just f fucking cluster up on the guy that i know can take the beating and everyone else just like cleans house which let's just say it you wouldn't uh be able to pull that shit over in fucking um, pen and paper world so why would you be able to do it on a video game so again i don't have a problem with that it's just something else to work around so again the point is is you could still get jumped as the bowman and again if for whatever reason, an attack of opportunity could have presented itself. You don't get to do attack of opportunity because you're a bow guy. You don't do those. Here's a way to do it. So again, free attack. It's hard to turn down, right? And notice um, you get one. You probably have a high dexterity if you're a ranged attacker. I'm assuming at least a dex of 12, probably 14, if not 16 or better. But it doesn't say that there's a limit on the attacks of opportunity. However... Since they don't say, I don't know, there is a feat that allows you to use your dexterity modifier to get extra attacks of opportunity. What was it called? It was combat something. Combat mobility? Oh, no. Combat expertise. Combat reflexes. You may make a number of additional attacks of opportunity per round equal to your dex bonus. With this feat, you may also make attacks of opportunity while flat-footed. Now, think about what I just said there. That last statement. You may make attacks of opportunity while flat-footed. This applies to melee. It says even in the search tags, attack melee. And that's only because without this feat, the only people that get to do attacks of opportunity for free are meleeers. But that feat we just talked about, the one that's way the fuck down here, that snapshot, 
that's basically giving attack of opportunity now to a range attacker. Now, if that would work in conjunction, I haven't tested that. So we got the grain of salt on this shit. Test it yourself, prove it to yourself. If you could get snapshot and you could get that one we just talked about, the combat reflexes. And it works. You're a bowman. You always have your bow. You get jumped. You're flat-footed. They say, fuck the bowman. Let's run back here and kill the wizard. They run past you outside of your area of influence in melee. But again, you're a bowman. But you have the ability to snapshot, so attack of opportunity. And with combat reflexes, even though you're flat-footed, you should still be able to do your attack of opportunity. So when they charge past you and go right for that fucking wizard, you might get a shot off. That's of value. I could see that being interesting. Keep going, though. That's this one. What does improved snapshot then do? Again, bigger investment requires, obviously, snapshot. Notice how this one also requires rapid shot. This one did not. Just point-blank shot, precise shot, and a high bab. This one requires uh, point-blank shot, rapid shot, uh, precise shot, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's included in there as far as I'm concerned. And snapshot now. So, obviously, and then rapid shot. Now, what does this one do? You threaten an additional five feet with snapshot. So this one, the range was melee, which again, for those of you who don't know, melee range is always considered five foot distance, which is why reach weapons exist, so they can go beyond five feet. This is basically giving you a 10 foot radius of an attack of opportunity. Okay, What does greater snapshot do? It increases it another fucking five. So that's 15 goddamn feet. That's a long distance for you to get your attacks of opportunities off. So again, those are a lot of things that can provoke attacks of opportunity. We've already talked about them in, in previous feet uh, videos. An example of one is there's a, uh, some teamwork tactics and there's some um, trip abilities that, again, if you get the right ones... When you trip a guy, they will provoke attacks of opportunity by you and your team, assuming your team can hit the motherfucker. That usually implies that, again, they're melee range. Well, not if you have snapshot, improved snapshot, and greater snapshot, as long as he's within 15 feet, and I trigger the quote-unquote attack of opportunity uh, thing, I should be able to shoot you in the face as you trip to the ground. You can see the fun here. So there's a, and that's just one example. There's there's a plenty of reasons that an attack of opportunity is going to fire off. Think about uh, all those builds where you're trying to scare the fuck out of bad guys. Whether we're doing Corning and Smash, Dreadful Carnage, Dazzling Display, or if we're just using spells that fear and uh, terrorize people. And they run fleeing away from you like little chickens that they are. And again, your range is not melee. It's five feet farther, thanks to improved snapshot, and five feet farther still, thanks to greater snapshot. You got a 15-foot radius around your archer where if they run through that circle, it's probably an attack of opportunity for you, right? You're like, oh, they're out running out of my range. Boop, shoot you. Just free shot. You know, it's, again, it's another one that makes you feel like Legolas, right? You know, the bad guys are running away. Let me just drop that prick. Free shot. Attack of opportunity. And again, the fact that range attackers don't get attack of opportunity, this is a way to get it, is really fucking impressive to me. So again, something else that could make the build really powerful. Notice how this one, of course, requires not only improved snapshot, but a, a high dexterity, which you probably were going to have. Anyway, if you don't have a dex of 17, you probably were at 16. Get yourself a belt of dexterity plus 2. Easy peasy, punk and squeezy. Cast reduced person on yourself or have someone do it for you. That's a size bonus to your dexterity. You went from 16 to 18. So again, easy peasy. Uh, but you can't pick this feat off of that. With a belt, you can. So get a piece of gear, not just a belt. Get a piece of gear that increases your dexterity to 17 or greater, and you can grab this feat now. Notice it also requires a bab of 12, which means I'm not getting this uh, until I'm a, if I'm a magus, an eldritch archer. Let's see, it'd be, here would be three, six, I'm counting bab now. This is six bab, here's nine. Not until level 16 would I be able to pick this up. And there's probably not a feat at level 16. There might be, but there probably isn't. Therefore, I'm probably getting it at 17. That's a long road to hoe to get this last one. But again, I'll fucking get it. I got nothing else to fucking do. Why not? So again, this is a solid upgrade. But again, it does more than that. Keep reading. Not only does it increase your range, watch this. Additionally, whenever you make the attack of opportunity with a ranged weapon and hit, you get a plus two on damage rolls and a plus two on rolls to confirm the critical hit. So again, better chance to crit and just more damage. Keep reading. We're not done yet. With these bonuses, increases to plus four when you have base attack bonus of 16. My Eldritch Archer will never get a bab of 16. They, get, they stop at 15 right here. However, wait for it. Uh, read the rest of it too. And plus six when you have a base attack bonus of 20. Now again, a fighter ranger can get that shit easy. 16's here, 20's there. And again, plus four to plus six to the damage just for free. And 
to the chance to confirm a crit, that's again plus two goes to plus four to plus six to that second roll. That's what the confirm the crit means. That's not bad. But wait, I just said the Elder Charger doesn't get it. Remember, they get to 15. That's the highest they go. That's not true. There's a spell that they have called Transformation. Now, they can't cast spells after they cast it. But fuck that. I don't care. They get a plus four to their strength, their dex, their con. It's an enhancement. So, like, bull strength, cat's grace, and bear's endurance all in one. But, again, but, there's always a but, but, um, those are enhancements, and therefore they don't stack with, like, the same spells we just talked about, or belts of strength, belts of endurance, or sorry, uh, dexterity, belts of constitution, or gear of enhancements. So again, that's not that big a deal because you're probably already have better than that. But the other thing it does is it increases your BAB, and this also works on wizards and sorcerers, by the way, which is probably too, uh, that spell transformation changes your BAB to your uh, caster level or your character level, I can't remember which. But again, if you're a purist wizard or purist sorcerer or a purist eldritch archer, you're level 20 and you cast that spell, you're getting a bab of 20. Well, what did that bab of 20 give you, baby? A plus 6 to all that shit we just talked about for the full duration of that spell. Better hits, better uh, armor, too. You get a better fortitude save thanks to that spell. And the spell only lasts for one round per caster level, so 20 rounds is 2 minutes. If you extend it, that's 4 minutes. So that would be like my last ditch effort spell. And it's a really good spell for like someone who is a melee or in our case a ranged attacker a, a, a fighter class say it that way because again going from 15 bab to 20 bab that's an extra attack around remember that also scales with things like deadly aim remember how that one worked minus one plus two for your damage well where did it cap out for the elder charger at a bab of 15 you're getting a minus four plus eight to your damage that's good but a fighter who has a bab of 20 or the Elder Archer who can cast that spell and give themselves a bab of 20 for short periods of time, now that goes to a minus 6. Well, that's more penalty. Fuck that. Yeah, but it's now it's plus 12 damage. Oh, well, never mind. I want that. You see how much fun you can have with that shit? So, again, there's some really good stuff that you can do with things like Greater Snapshot, too, on a ranged build. And I can see me making an Elder Archer or a Divine Hunter, a Ranger, a Fighter. Hell, I am almost tempted just to beat this game just to be a dick. Pardon my French. Uh, with a, a, a custom party, like we did back in Kingmaker days, and I, I posted that uh, series of videos that was like me and two of my favorite teammates, my, my triumvirates, what I call that playthrough. I could totally see making a full custom party build where it's me and, and five mercenaries and not take any of these fucking idiots unless I have to. And make them all be bowmen of various styles. So one's a fighter, one's a divine hunter, paladin, one's a ranger, one's a, um, hell, I could probably make a rogue, a solid rogue that could shoot with bow and arrow. Uh, I can make an alchemist, you know, a grenadier, whatever, and still go with bows and arrows. So when I'm not using bombs, I have, you know, the ability to shoot them out. there, or, or make them just a crossbowman. Again, it doesn't have to be bow and arrows. It can be uh, crossbows and shit like that. But notice uh, on these snapshots, uh, Again, ranged weapon doesn't say anything about bow. Uh, improved snapshot doesn't say anything about bow. Just it's a ranged weapon. So again, do you have javelin? Do you have dart? Do you have again stuff that would normally be at that close range anyway? So you'd probably be if you wanted it like a, a throwing axe build for whatever fucking reason. Like you want to be all uh, barbarian up in this house, a throwing axe build kind of makes sense. Greater snapshot could work for that build. Just want to say that, that there's some fun to be had there. So again, I can make a, a throwing axe barbarian that gets all this shit and have some serious fun. Again, imagine a team of six players, and maybe one of them even has like a pet, like the ranger would have an animal companion. So we have seven with the pet. The pet's the tank, and <laughs> let them be up in the front, and everyone else is just whipping out like ranged weapons and just peppering the motherfuckers with ranged attacks, just shooting and throwing axes and chucking bombs and just watching everybody's health just go down at range like they never get beyond the pet would be the goal. That'd be pretty fucking cool. And again, with the ranger having some spells, the paladin too, the ranger could get spells that include summons. And there's not a lot of them, but they could get a summon or two. So if you really needed to have another front line where, you know, like, oh, Jesus, there's like eight bad guys going to come here, and I don't think my team of six and my one pet is capable of taking out all eight in the first combat round. So someone's going to melee past the pet and get to my team, my, my ranged attackers, and, and try to kick our ass. Well, why not use the ranger to summon monsters one two three you know whatever they have just poof here you go yeah it wastes his turn to do it but now you have pets on the battlefield beyond just your animal companion uh when you go in your mythic path there's free spells depending on which mythic path you get and every mythic path i get by the way so not just whichever one you get 
anyone you get, not only do you get spells, one of the other things they give you is the ability to summon something for free. So again, the main character will have a summons, guaranteed, in this game. So again, something that can be, you're, you're a tank, go up there, buddy, Gollum, or whatever, you know, angel that you summon, or demon that you summon, or whatever the fuck it is you summon, let them fucking tank for you while you and your ranged attackers are just pop, 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 pop. And again, I could see some serious fun. Get yourself a halfling in there somewhere, like make a bard halfling, uh, and give them, because they, I believe bards get martial weapon proficiency, do they not? And give them the um, sling staff. It is an exotic weapon, but not for a halfling. And halfling bards make perfect sense. It's dex based character and it's high charisma character. Perfect weapon for them is the fucking sling staff. And a bard makes sense. You can be singing your songs, casting heals, and, and summoning pets besides too. I could make a really good all party ranged attacking party and it'll be a different class each time. And I couldn't tell you who is the best of them. The ranger's probably still going to pull ahead, let's just be honest. But. Divine Smite with a fucking Divine Hunter, I think, is a thing. That's the Paladin that can shoot with a bow and arrow. That's a possibility. I think that's a thing in this game. A fighter that just gets every fucking ranged attack that the Rangers just couldn't possibly keep up with. Skill and armor besides. Skill with bows and arrows besides. You know, better reflexes, battle tactics. And again, there were tactic feats uh, uh, that were in the game. Not the Shield of Caster type ones, but... There were ones in the game that were specific for uh, protecting characters in the back ranks, right? So, uh, uh, saving throw bonuses, uh, the ability to tandem trip is another example. Uh, and again, if your pet has trip, remember we talked about this. So the ranger could get something like this and, and let his wolf buddy trip bad guys and get advantage on tripping bad guys. Uh, shield wall if you're using a shield, but again, if you're using bow and arrows, you can't. But there is nothing stopping you from, from chucking a javelin and having a shield in the offhand. There is nothing stopping you from having a dart in your main hand and a shield in the offhand. So I can make a, a javelin shield, a Spartan character, like a fighter. And for the barbarian, I can give them a shield, because I think they can have shields too. I can give them a shield and give them a throwing axe, and that's a thing. So shield wall, seize the moment. Remember how this one works, attacks of opportunity. Uh, remember, traditionally melee, but again, with snapshot, and improved snapshot, and greater snapshot, seize the moment could... Theoretically, I haven't tested it. Could allow you some attacks of opportunity when someone crits with that bow, with that javelin, with that bomb, with that whatever. So when everyone on the party was in that 15 range circle, is throwing bombs. Like say this is like three of your ranged attackers here, and like someone throws a bomb on this guy crits. These other two guys, because of their snapshot, improved snapshot, and greater snapshot, and seize the moment. If they all three have it, which is something I would probably try, they could just shoot that motherfucker. Just be like, oh, attack of opportunity. It's <laughs> just. Fucking just constant arrows and bows and crossbow bolts and fucking javelins and darts and just everything. Just throw everything at him. Fucking throw a chair at him, too, while you're at it. I could see this being fun, is my point. So, again, some serious fun that you could have with a ranged attacker. Just wanted to point that. What else do we have? So, we've covered all the ranged shit. Now, let's get into the rest of the stuff. So, let's see. We've covered agile. Don't need to cover that one. We've covered those. Clutch shot deadly. Okay, now we have defensive combat training. Okay, uh, you treat your total hit dice as your base attack bonus when calculating your combat maneuver defense. Do not grab this. Do not grab this if your bab is already going to be 20 by the end of the build. Why? Because that's what this is giving you. It's treating your level as 20. That's what it says by hit dice. Your hit dice means your character level. doesn't matter if you cross dip, multi dip, 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 you know, 10, 10 split, whatever the fuck you do. You're level 20 character, you have 20 hit dice. So if you're a 20 hit dice character, getting this allows you to treat that as your base attack bonus for purposes of the combat maneuver defense. Why does that matter? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here's your combat maneuver defense. Notice how the CMD is calculated in this formula. 10, base, everyone gets that, plus your base attack bonus. Now on a wizard, your base attack bonus, a purist wizard, your base attack bonus is going to be, at best, 10. That's some bullshit. If you're a magus or a middle Bab character, or three quarters progression is what they call that Bab character, like my Magus builds typically are, you'll finish with a Bab of 15, not 20. So, again, for those guys, this is of value if this is your thing, if you're worried about combat maneuver defense. Notice strength modifier and dex modifiers, both of them are added in here. Special bonuses for being size, which is probably like if you're teeny tiny, you get a bonus. Miscellaneous modifiers, and again, shit like this gives you a plus two, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, again, of value for anyone that's not a full base attack bonus dude, like my fighter right now, or my ranger, or my paladin, or my barbarian, or my blood rager. Those guys, 
would not benefit from this. So the fact that this is in the thumbs down category, that's probably why it's in the thumbs down category because the game is probably assuming you're going to go straight fighter. And they're like, you don't want that shit. But if this is a fighter level dip one, and just so I can get some feats, you know, because again, you get like an extra feat and you get like two stuff and you get all kinds of proficiencies for being just one level of fighter. And then you're going like, you know, 19 levels of wizard just to be a dickhead. Maybe you don't even want Eldritch Knight. You just said, I want fighter stuff. Because maybe I want that armor, and I wanted to do that um, arcane armor training to get my mithril chain shirt on. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. For those guys, again, your bab is going to be shit. Again, a wizard 19, fighter 1, the bab is going to finish with a 10, not a 20. So, again, not great. But having this, if you're worried about being tripped, if you're worrying about sunder armor attempts, if you're worried about uh, bull rush attempts, if you're worrying about dirty tricks or uh, sorry, disarm, this would be a bonus. So sure, is it good? Yeah, especially on those really weak characters like the wizards, the sorcerers, whatever. For anyone else, I'd probably skip it. I mean, there's better ways to increase your uh, combat maneuver defense in my mind uh, that don't involve uh, your base attack bonus. And again, not for nothing, but that wizard or sorcerer that might be suffering from having a low bab, remember, I just told you of a spell that you could use to increase your bab to 20, assuming you're a level 20 caster. So again... They have ways around it that don't involve grabbing this feat. Now, the downside on that is they can't cast spells in that form. You know, the transformation spell is amazing, but it's usually the last-ditch effort spell. But again, increase your strength. Increase your dex. Make yourself tiny. Again, give yourself other buffs from other feats that are of value. And again, your CMD will be better than you think. So you won't be bullied very much by the end of the game, in my mind. Early, yeah. But again, early, then it's... You know, again, the, the increase is going to be minuscule. Think of it this way. If I grab this, because, uh, let's see, uh, what kind of requirements were there? There are none. You can grab this at level one, which is silly. But let's just assume you grab it at level three, just because. Like, maybe you're getting tripped by wolves, and you're like, fuck that, defense combat training. I'm a wizard. I'm tired of being tripped. At level three, your bab is one. I grab this at level three. Now, for all intents and purposes, it's three because of this feat, but only for, for that combat maneuver defense. So I just went up two points. Okay, cool. There's another feat up here that did the same thing and did more. So, eh, well, at level four, now it's four. But yeah, but it would have been two without it. And because your bab is two here as a wizard. So again, if I had grabbed something like, I'm thinking of the coordinated uh, maneuvers. I think it's in this uh, C category. Where the hell is it? Yeah, coordinated defense, sorry. With coordinated defense, you could have given yourself a plus two for that. And it gets better... Uh, if you are smaller, you and your buddy, because it's a teamwork feat, if you are smaller than the guy that's attacking you. So again, if you're a halfling and a gnome buddy and you both have this, or maybe you're just a uh, inquisitor halfling, for example, and you have solo tactics. So again, I'm just standing next to one of my buddies who happens to be a gnome or another halfling. Uh, I'll get a plus four. Again, we're already better with this than we were with the one we just showed you. With uh, this thing. Because again... At level four, it would be a bab of four for all intents and purposes. But again, if I didn't have this, it would be a bab of two. And with a feat I just pointed at, it was already plus two. So I'm already at four still. Could have been six, again, if I'm next to another little teeny tiny person. So again, that one's still better. Well, what about when it gets to level six? When your bab is three, this thing would be technically a six. Okay, that's pretty good. That's three points higher. Again, the one above was two to four points higher, depending on the situation. So again, the other one's kind of better, right? It's only really when you get to here and above that it starts getting nice. And again, by this point, you're starting to get those spells in that gear where you're unlikely to be hit, where you're unlikely to be bullied. Your strength is high. Your dex is high. You can get shit that can make you teeny tiny, give you the buffs that you need that would all go towards that combat maneuver defense where you don't need this thing. So... Is it usable? Yeah. Is it great? Yeah. Uh, it's all right. And again, I'm sure that someone's going to give me a fringe case where they're like, I this one area. I'm being tripped and having disarmed and they're fucking sundering my armor and fucking me over. I want my combat maneuver defense high, high, high. Okay. Sure. But now let's take a look at some of those combat maneuvers that they could do to you. Right? What were the combat maneuvers? You guys remember? We had bull rush. That's annoying. Trip. Soup's annoying. Sunder armor, uh, disarm, and then the dirty trick one, which had like three different choices in it. 
But let's talk about all those except for Dirty Trick because those get confusing. Bull Rush. You're probably getting pushed around as a wizard anyway. I mean, let's just fucking say it. So having someone bull rush your ass and send you fucking farther away from them is probably to your benefit. Let's just fucking say it. Why? They're pushing me. They're not attacking you. Remember, bull rush by itself does not attack, does not do damage. They are literally shoulder checking you and you go flying back. It's back. Think of back in your high school days as a little nerd when they fucking shoulder checked you up into the locker. It didn't hurt. I mean, it was annoying. It didn't hurt. The, the fucking jocks were being assholes. And they're laughing and they walked away. That's basically what Bull Rush is. They're just shoving you around. And again, if they're pushing you out of the way of their other friends' melee attacks, why is that a problem? I'm happy with Bull Rush. So, okay, not a problem there. Trips, that's annoying. And again, for wolves and shit like that, I can see the appeal. But those motherfuckers have a really good chance to trip you. So you'd really, really, really have to have a high strength and or dex and combat maneuver defense shit besides like this thing here, like a high bab. To avoid that because I was being tripped on a fucking fighter and a fighter has a solid bab and a good strength and deck stat because that's the things I gave a shit about so again if that, they're capable of tripping my fighter how is this helping your wizard right because the fighter don't have no strength of 17 or a dex of 17 both and a bab of you know 5 10 15 20 so again if the fighter can be tripped and bull rushed and all that shit how is this helping your wizard right okay wait there's others. Sunder armor. You're a wizard. You got fucking armor? Nope. Okay. Ignore that one. Okay, disarm weapon. Are you probably using your weapon as a wizard or a sorcerer? You have race spells. You have spell spells. Are you giving a shit that they made you drop your little crossbow? Oh, no, I can't shoot you at point-blank range and provoke an attack of opportunity. You see where I'm, I'm at here? looks good on paper and I get what it's supposed to do but it's one of those where for the person who would probably want it it ain't doing you a fucking really bit of good if anything it's more of a hindrance than anything again go back to my bull rush example I'd rather they push me the fuck away from the melee combatants please trip is the only one on that entire list that is of value where again not being tripped is cool I can get that but there's better ways to get that protection and those include things like being able to trip yourself gives you a bonus to your saves against it. It's in the fucking first paragraph there, the very last sentence in the first paragraph. And a plus two bonus to CMD when defending against trip. Again, it's only a plus two, not a plus ten. Remember, a wizard, level 20, has a bab of ten. That one feat we were talking about simulates you having a bab of twenty. So that's a ten point boast, a boost. But that's by the end of the game. The chances the guys are tripping you all the way to the end of the game, it's, it's usually the early shit that the, the annoying fucks. So again, plus two is good enough for me. Then throw in some other stuff. Wait, where is it at? Um, sorry. I gotta find it. Uh, is it C? C category. Uh, yeah, coordinated defense. Plus two competence bonus, plus four again if you're teeny tiny. Grab shit like this. With you and another front runner, you know, someone or like you and another wizard, another sorcerer, another cleric, so whoever's in the back ranks with you, so that you can give to yourselves this buff. Especially if you're teeny tiny people, plus two going to plus four, that's a solid increase. Grab the other one that I just talked about, the trip ability itself. Again, could benefit you. There's other ones besides, I'm sure I'm just not remembering them all, but there's other feats out there that will give you combat maneuver defense bonus against trip, or, or against combat maneuvers in, in general. Again, feel free to grab those. Don't waste your time on shit like this, in my mind. Unless, again, you really, really want it. And again, unless you really, really know that your guy is routinely fucking tripped, bull rushed, and annoyed by these other abilities. This is not something that makes the cut to me. Fencing Grace, and it's not in here, but uh, oh yeah, it's Slashing Grace, both of these. You don't want both. In my mind, you want one or the other. You choose a weapon and decide it. It's a one hand uh, weapon, sorry, it's weapon finessed weapons. And they either have to be a weapon that slashes or does slashing damage, or one that fences, which means does piercing damage. So that's like your rapier, I believe. Um, daggers, I think, are piercing as well. Short swords, I think those are slashing. But again, you will know because, again, it, it restricts you. Notice uh, the list here. These are your, your fencing ones. Bites, claws, daggers, S-stocks, heavy pick, light pick, punching dagger, rapier, size, short spears, sing hands, which I've never seen in this game. Spiked Heavy Shield Bash, Spiked Light Shield Bash, which, again, I've never seen in either games. Star and Eyes, which are fucking weird. Tongis, which I've never seen. Tridents, which I have seen. So, again, a lot of piercing. 
So fencing grace works on a lot of stuff. Slashing grace for obviously all the other shit. So you got bastard sword, which how oh, that's weapon finessable. Is that? What? Let's read this. Hold on. Uh, you can stagger uh, your sword on the slashing weapon. Choose one uh, one kind of light or one-handed slashing weapon, such as a longsword. Which is definitely not weapon finessable. When wielding your chosen weapon one-handed, you can treat it as one-handed piercing melee weapon for all feats and class abilities that require such a weapon, such as a duelist precise strike. And you can add your dex modifier instead of your strength modifier to that weapon's damage. Shit! I must be the one perfect size for you. Uh, the, the trick on this side, uh, um, it does what I think it does, but the, the, the trick here is you need weapon finesse, as you see, in the prerequisites for both of them. <clears throat> and a higher dexterity, weapon focus, and the weapon of choice. Now, the reason I'm confused is, again, let's go to the longsword as the example. You cannot weapon finesse that, which means if I have a longsword in my hand, my base attack bonus, and my, or sorry, my attack bonus is modified by my strength, period. Doesn't matter if my dex is fucking super high. And this feat doesn't give you anything as far as your chance to hit. You're still keying off of your strength. However, if for whatever reason you have a low strength and high dex and you still want to swing a longsword, you will be able now with Slashing Grace to do more damage with it. So this is still solid choice. It's weird. And again, it requires you then to grab something like Weapon Finesse and use a weapon that you're not Weapon Finessing, right? So that's dumb. So I wouldn't do that. I mean, sure, there's probably a reason that people would. But I would stick to the weapons on this list that you can weapon finesse. What would those be? Not this one, not that one. This one can weapon finesse. Uh, not that one. I think you can weapon finesse a hand axe because I think it's a light weapon. Same with a Kama, same with a Kukri for sure. You can't weapon finesse a scimitar in this game. Uh, in Kingmaker, you used to be able to, then they took it out, and then modders put it back in. To do it, you needed to grab um, a feat that the modders added called Dancing Dervish, which is fucking cool. Uh, but scimitars used to be finessable, but now they're not. Um, modders will probably change that, though, just so you know. Short Sword and Sickle, I believe both of those can be weapon finesse. This one definitely can. I think Sickle, too. So there's still a good list in here um, that would allow you to use your dexterity to swing, which is what weapon finesse would give you, which you would need to grab this feat, or that feat. Um, if you grab either of these feet for the weapon of choice, obviously, now you're adding your your dex modifier to the damage now are these good yes are they great no why are they not great because i can either grab that here for one weapon or i can grab something called weapon finesse mythic once i unlock mythics and you can get that i think at like level fucking one uh mythic rank i think if not it's definitely level two point is yeah no, sorry take it back it is level two uh point is though what does weapon finesse mythic give you well glad you asked it basically gives you this and this for everything that's a uh, weapon finessable for free with one pick so any weapon finessable weapon and assuming you have a high dexterity which why wouldn't you if you're weapon finessing you get weapon finesse mythic any weapon finessable weapon suddenly is getting your dex modifier for the damage now caveat on that one just like these two it does not work for your offhand so if you're two weapon fighting let's say i'm doing kukri kukri because that's a staple for my builds which would be uh, the kukri in here yeah, slashing. So you'd want slashing grace probably, right? Well, again, not. I'd get weapon finesse mythic. But either way I go, if I get weapon finesse mythic or slashing grace, or if I have something that's fencing grace, that again, like a, like maybe I'm doing psi psi attack, or a claw claw, maybe you want to like murder people with your fucking dragon talents or whatever. Point is, if you're using fencing grace or slashing grace or weapon finesse mythic, and you're two weapon fighting, you would get your dex modifier for damage for your main weapon, and you would get half of it for your offhand, guaranteed. Except if you either, in your offhand, have what's called an agile weapon, which is a weapon that literally has agile in the descriptor. You know, it's like an agile short sword. That's the thing. Plus two or whatever. Because agile by the definition, they're they're weighted properly. They're 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 extra special, and as such, uh, it's a weapon finessable weapon by default, I think. And those agile weapons will, by default, give you the ability to use your full dexterity modifier for damage on that weapon swing. Doesn't matter if it's your main hand or your off hand. So put the agile weapon in your off hand. If you can't find an agile weapon, because that's a thing and that's hard to do, there is another way to do it, and it is called. It's in the D's. Double slice. 
it I know when you read it it says strength it's implied that it's strength when it's strength or dex when it's dex so in your case since you're a weapon finesser and have weapon finesse mythic and you have double slice any weapon finessable weapon that I two weapon wield I'm getting my dex modifier in full for the damage and my weapon my dex modifier because I have weapon finesse for my swing so again with nothing more than weapon finesse double slice and weapon finesse mythic I'm a dexterity god when it comes to wielding weapons, assuming I can pick up any of those. And most everybody has some kind, even a wizard has proficiencies in something. Even if you don't have simple weapon proficiency, there's something in there that is weapon finessable. A dagger a, a wizard can use, and that is weapon finessable. So now, high dex wizards, double slice it up, get weapon finesse, and grab weapon finesse mythic, and suddenly you're choppity choppity with the best of them. Now, I would not wizard that way, but I'm just saying you could that's cool there is one other way to do this though not an agile weapon not grabbing this precious feet if you happen to be a rogue and there's different types of rogue subclasses of rogues so not every rogue may have this so be careful here but if you look at your rogue levels and in one of the levels you get something called finesse training it's a lot like this thing here it looks like something like this where you get to that level of rogue an elder scoundrel gets it for example like three separate times you pick a weapon you know, kukris daggers short swords rapiers whatever you pick and the way it, a finesse training works is it by default let's say i get finesse training daggers okay any normal dagger remember it, it, you have to pick the type of dagger so there's daggers there's punching daggers there's star knives don't don't confuse them you pick whatever one you're talking about so if it's just a generic dagger pick weapon or sorry finesse training dagger anytime you wield a dagger whether it's one hand or two handed because you have weapon finesse for free as a rogue you get to use your dex modifier to the swing but because you have finesse training in dagger any dagger you wield off hand or main hand gets your full dex modifier for damage it basically turns every dagger you touch into an agile dagger for free you can grab that as an Eldritch Scoundrel, for example, three separate times. So you can get Dagger, you can get Punching Dagger, you can get Rapier, you can get Psy, you can get uh, Kukri's, you can get whatever. So mix and match to your heart's content, but that's powerful. And that, again, would mean you do not need to get, technically, Weapon Finesse Mythic, because Weapon Finesse Mythic, while great, is not great like that. Because, again, if I'm too weapon wielding, Weapon Finesse falls short. Or sorry, weapon finesse mythic falls short. It would require me to get an agile weapon or again a uh, double slice. But for you, you lucky finesse trained motherfucker, you don't even need weapon finesse mythic. You just make sure to stick with whatever weapon or weapons that you unlock. And again, rogues get different amounts of them. So like I said, the eldritch scoundrel can get it like if you stay a purist level twenty, you can get it like three times. I wouldn't even care about that. I get it once and call it good. Pick one weapon and, and make sure it's the, your favorite. The dagger, the short sword, the kukri is my favorite, but rapier, solid choice. But if you're gonna two weapon wield, which is the goal here, would not the goal, it's it's a good choice, say it that way. Would be the good choice would be the two weapon wield. I would go kukri every day all day, and you only need to get that once. Why do I say that? Because if you watch my previous builds where we talk about the Kukri Saint, I did two separate videos talking about a sword saint that would two weapon wield in Kingmaker. And I was tempted, and I made the build, so I did a comparison video where I compared a pure sword saint, level 20, where I did two kukris. Told you how I would make them. And then I compared them to two other builds that I was toying around with, where I did a sword saint level 12, eventually, for both of them. And then for the other eight levels, I either went eight levels of vivisectionist or eight levels of eldritch scoundrel, because it gave me another spell book and some other fiddly bits besides, and that the direct comparison to those three were in two separate videos uh, watch the most recent one it would be my advice to you because it's more in depth but I break them down and, and show the pros and cons for all three builds so again a pure sword saint was king it was awesome he did what he was supposed to do but the 12-8 the split for vivisectionist and the 12-8 split for the uh, eldritch scoundrel had some fun potential sneak attack being one of those potentials the other potential being um, the mutagen for the um uh, alchemist the alchemist had another spell book that had different spells than the sword saint would have access to like healing spells other buff spells which was fucking tits the elder scoundrel had the exact same spell book as the sword saint um they could never cast spells beyond level three or four that was a big limit know that 
But the Eldritch Scoundrel, because you take even one level of Eldritch Scoundrel training, you can cast every wizard spell level 0 through 6 from a wand, a scroll, doesn't matter. You do not need use magic device. Why? Because I could, in theory, have picked up that spell at some point in the build, maybe. Even if, again, if I'm doing the 12-8 split, and again, the Elder Scoundrel then would never exceed past level 3 spell casting, which is fine. Those level 4, 5, 6 wizard spells or Elder Scoundrel spells, however you want to look at it, are still part of my innate training, which means I find a wand, a scroll, I can use them. Period. That's why a cleric level one is an amazing dip that people don't think about because now you can cast every uh, healing spell that a cleric could, level one through 20, from a wand or a scroll for free. You do not need to use magic device. That's fucking pretty cool. And again, I do a direct comparison to those three built. That would be, again, another example of why I mention this to you, because that uh, eight-level dip of Elder Scoundrel, they only unlock uh, finesse training one time, I think. And we went with Kukri's, because, duh, because we're doing a direct Kukri-Kukri comparison. And they were fucking monsters. I did not need to find agile Kukri's. I did not need double slice. Again, it was just baked into the build. It was free of fucking charge. And just like here, where I would not need this, I would also not need uh, weapon finesse mythic, because, again, I would know... I'm a Kukri guy. I train, you know, finesse training in Kukris. That's the only weapons I'm ever going to equip. And again, that therefore you would not need to burn a very precious mythic ability or mythic feat on something like weapon finesse mythic. Just wanted to point that out to you because again, that's another cool thing that you can do. But I, I, I like the fact that it is available to everybody. You just need to have weapon finesse as a feat. When you finally unlock Mythics, when you finally get to that level, level 2 uh, Mythic rank, you can pick Weapon Finesse Mythic and suddenly your damage is just ridiculously good if you have a high dex build. Some serious fun that you can have there. What else we got? Uh, so we've covered that. We've covered Fencing Grace and Slashing Grace. We've already covered our Snapshots, Rapid Shot. Okay, so now we're down to our last one. Shield. Well, we'll talk about these two. Shield Bash. We've already talked about this one probably. Anyway, notice how this one requires nothing. Except for intelligence. Uh, oh, sorry. There we go. Uh, it requires shield training. There you go. So we'll, uh, you'll be able to use a light, heavy, or buckler. Uh, uh, a tower shield would fit in that category, of course, too. But I don't think you can shield bash with a tower uh, shield. Uh, but you can use a light and heavy shield. Notice how it specifically says light or heavy shield. does not say buckler. It says buckler proficiency, though. So it makes me think that you could. So I'm kind of confused by that. If anything, if you can't use a buckler, I would submit that as a bug report. And just tell them. Not that it's a bug, I would say please change the prerequisites to include light shield, heavy shield, and delete buckler proficiency. Because if you can't use a buckler, then why care? And the reason I point that out is I can give you buckler proficiency with a goddamn background. Where is it at? Right here. Gladiator, I can get light armor and buckler proficiency for free as a wizard by being a gladiator for my background, if I so choose. So, just to, to, to point that out to you. Um... But what does Shield Bash do? Literally, if you have a shield equipped, this incurs the standard two-weapon fighting penalties, which that's why I say that it's surprising that it didn't have, as a prerequisite, two-weapon fighting. You don't have to. It's just basically saying that you have figured out that your shield is a weapon, and you can smack you in the face with it. But it's, again, because you would use it as a weapon if you grab Shield Bash, you would be at a massive penalty now to your swing with your main hand weapon, and your offhand weapon, which happens to be your shield. So do not grab this one without grabbing two weapon fighting first. Notice something else. The light shield does X damage. The heavy shield does better damage. Who cares? 1d4 versus 1d6 is a quibble. That's like, like a point of difference on average for damage. It's no big fucking deal. But look at the part about where it says light shield is considered a light weapon. Remember, when we have two weapon fighting, let me find it for you. If it's a light weapon, your offhand weapon, which is now your shield, so a light shield, the penalties are reduced by two each. Why? Because it's light. It's easier to swing, technically speaking. So if you are sword and boardinate and, and the weapon and your shield is a light shield and you're two weapon fighting and you have this feat, instead of it being a minus four, minus four to your swing, which would be normal with a heavy shield, it would be minus two, minus two. Minus two for your long sword, minus two for your light shield because you have two weapons fighting and it is a light weapon so go light shield in my advice to you having said that 
there's fighter feats down in here. We talked about these before. Where you can do this effortless dual wielding. Where you treat all one-handed weapons as if they were light. For purposes of attacking with two weapons. So again, when you talk about two weapon fighting, again, minus four, minus four. If you try to do scimitar, scimitar. And you even if you had two weapon fighting, you would still be at a minus four and a minus four to your swing. If you had effortless dual wielding, they would drop now down to a minus two, minus two. Just like they were light weapons. Same with your sword and board. If you do shield bash and you had that thing I just talked about, the effortless dual wielding and two weapon fighting, all those things coming together, you could shield bash with a heavy shield and a fucking long sword or whatever one handed weapon you have, like a rapier, which would be light, or a, well, actually, it wouldn't be light, but um, wouldn't matter. Uh, the shield is the part that matters, the off hand weapon, which is your heavy shield would incur, incur a minus four penalty unless you had this and two weapon fighting. So again, a fighter could totally do a, a total Captain America shield bash, but again, swing with a fucking weapon. They actually had a com comic back in the day. I know I'm deviating here, but I, I, I just like pointing this part out because I love Captain America. He's a fucking cool character. Captain America it always bugged me that, you know, for those that don't know what, what Captain America is supposed to be, it's not that he's the best American. He is, but that's not the, not the take home. He is... Marvel Superman. And let me explain that because he does not fly or dodge bullets and shit of that nature or can take bullets to the eyeball and have it bounce off. None of that shit applies here. He is Marvel's version of the best hero. Okay? And I, and, and I know this is going to flame a lot of people because Wolverine's better! Deadpool's awesome! Yeah, Spider-Man's cool too. I love them all. But... When the poop hits the fan and you need to turn to someone with solid morals, even the mighty Thor of fucking God in the comic book will defer to the advice and knowledge and wisdom of Captain America. Okay? This is the same as why Superman's awesome. Everyone, like, if, if Superman's against it, you, you take pause. When Superman says, I don't think this is the way to go, really? Oh, well, let's rethink this. That's a thing. <laughs> so, again, it's the same with Marvel. If Captain America is, that's why the Civil War thing that they, they did in the movies, which, of course, was based on a comic, a very good series of comics, by the way. Civil War in the comics was way better. More heroes and, and, and bad guys besides involved. But the premise was there. They did it, uh, they did it justice. I will say that. They did it justice in the movie. But... Again, when you watch that movie, if you watch that movie, and if you know nothing about comics, know that Iron Man means well, Captain America does well. When you see the two of them are at odds for should they do this thing, should they not do this thing, it is a moment that is supposed to give you pause. It is something in the movie and the comics where you look at that and go, shit, Cap is against this? I don't know, man. And the people that join Tony Stark... They all, oh, Cap's old, old-fashioned. He doesn't know nothing. He, he, he's from the fucking 30s or 40s. Where the fuck when the war was at? I don't remember. Point is, they're all just like, well, Tony Stark, he's flashy. He's smart. He's a millionaire, billionaire, whatever. You know. So, of course, he knows better. Why would he know better? Just because he's rich. No, he's an egotistical asshat. He's decided, and he's decided he's smarter than everybody, and he is, and he's decided he's better than everybody, which he's not. Captain America is looking at it realistically. So when the that comic came out, I, I read all of those. Well, not all. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. I read many of them. I didn't catch every little, because there was a lot of them. Um, but I got the, the basic gist of the story. And again, it's one of those where you're watching it, and you're, you're, you're just like, Jesus Christ, how can anyone not be on Captain America's side? And the weirdest thing to me was, and, and the, for those that understood, I mean, it's in the movies, but not really to this degree. Uh, in the comics, Spider-Man was the guy. Like, I mean, he was... He has, like... he He's the one that has more fucking comics, like, titles. Like, he's the spectacular Spider-Man. He's the amazing Spider-Man. He's Spider-Man. He is... He has multiple comics because he will sell comics. He's that dude. So he's prevalent in the comics. Not so much in the movies. He's got plenty of movies, but, again, in the Avengers uh, canon, 
we barely talked about Spider-Man, right? I mean, he was there, but he never really teamed with the Avengers. This was his first chance. In the comics, on the other hand, he has been constantly petitioning to, uh, petitioning to be either a, a, a Fantastic Four member or an Avenger, and he routinely gets rejected because you're just a punk kid. But the Avengers, even Cap, respect him. They, they know what he does. He, they keep an eye on him for a good reason. He's doing good work why impede that? So when Spider-Man teams with Iron Man, it was devastating. It was something that you saw in your life. And I mean, to the point in the actual comic, Tony Stark, Iron Man, convinced Peter Parker, Spider-Man, to go on camera, take his mask off, and tell the world his name and that he's been Spider-Man since he was a kid and he agrees with Tony Stark. And if that don't give you pause and go, holy fucking Jesus, and it was like the last panel of a fucking comic, and you're just like, what the fuck did this happen? And it was not taken back. It was there. Everyone, but it was taken back later, but th not because of that. From a completely different arc, like the devil came by and wiped everyone's memory. It, comics are weird, man, is my point. Anyway, my point was, there was a comic with Captain America... And it always bugged me that he was always just a shield guy. He punches too and all that shit. And I, again, I've tried to make those builds as well. But there was a comic where some sorcerer prick came by and warped like all of Manhattan or some shit. And turned it back to like the Stone Ages, like Conan the Barbarian Ages. And Captain America was in the, the bubble when it happened. So everyone gets rewritten to be their barbarian equivalent. So people that were like... Uh, you know, like Iron Man and whatever. He was like a knight or whatever. Captain America, though, he had his fucking chain shirt. He had a loincloth, long, blonde, flowing hair like a fucking barbarian should. And he had his shield and a fucking broadsword. <laughs> and it looked badass. So when I say shield bash, sword and board, that's in my brain. That's the first thing I'm thinking of is the fighter, Captain America type guy. Oops, I'm locking up my game from the heat. Uh, Captain America type fighter guy that's just an awesome combatant so again shield bash get to weapon fighting first get that fighter training i was just telling you about for the, the effortless two weapon fighting where the fuck it's called so you can use your heavy shield because uh let's just say it a light shield's a piece of shit 1d4 sucks 1d6 would be slightly better and you'll probably i don't know this but you'll probably find better heavy shields in the game than you will find light shields let's just say it it's not to say that you can't pitch hit and switch between the two because it doesn't matter which one you're using. You're not like saying shield bash for only light shield or shield bash only for heavy shield. Shield bash is for shields, period. So again, is it good? It's an extra attack and it still allows you, and the only reason that I bring this up, this it still allows you to have armor. So you get your shield bonus for when you're defending yourself. So you're still getting all that, that beautiful heavy shield or light shield plus one, plus five, plus whatever bonus. So this is another reason to go sword and board as a fighter, in my opinion, because you can be two weapon wielder. And what's better, because there's a, a ranger that can do this really well, because rangers get these things called uh, uh, combat, uh, combat feats, what's it called, combat style, and multiple choices. You can only pick one, uh, and you get multiple feats for it as you level up a ranger. But one of them is archery, so obviously your point blank shot, precise shot, things of this nature are free if you wait. As a ranger, you'll get them free down here. Um, or you get to pick them, I should say. Um, but for that same ranger in Steph Archery, you could pick two weapon fighting. Again, just like it sounds, you do not need to meet the prerequisite. So you can be a strength based two weapon fighter, which is of appeal. But better than that, there is a sword and board build. I forget what it's officially called. But it, it includes two weapon fighting, but it also includes things like shield bash, shield mastery, shield fighting style. So you can sword and board it. Do not need to meet the prerequisites, which, as you can see here, intelligence and, and proficiency, that's not a big deal. But the other shield stuff, just to show them to you, uh, they're usually called shields. So, so like shield focus might be one that you'll get for free in that ranger style. But there's also a um, uh, shield mastery or something like that. Let me find it. Shield master. Notice how it requires shield bash, two weapon fighting, and blah, blah, blah. And again, two weapon fighting... You would get for free in that path and two weapon fighting requires a dex of 15 you might not be a ranger that has a dex of 15 especially if you want to be captain america strong man beating the fuck out of shit you're going all in on that strength baby this would be a way to do it go ranger 
go that combat style that unlocks things like Shield Master, Two Weapon Fighting, Shield Bash, and there's another one, I just can't think of it. It might even be Double Slice, I can't remember. But it's a way for you to just to beat the ever-loving bejesus out of guys with a sword and board. And it's totally there. Last thing to talk about, of course, are these guys, because we just didn't really talk about them. But again, you kind of know what these are. Armor proficiency for whether it's light, medium, or heavy, that just means you can now wear those armor. That does nothing against your arcane spell failure, but again, there's many classes that arcane spell failure is not an issue. For example, uh, bards get, I want to say, light armor proficiency, and they might even get medium. And whichever one they get proficiency in for free at level 1 bard, they can cast spells in that armor, not a problem. Hell, I think bards can even have a buckler, and maybe even a light shield, and still cast spells and not have that issue. Just fucking sweet. Uh, there's um, other caster types, of course, that are like divine casters that do not give a rat's ass about uh, being in armor and casting spells. They do not have arcane spell failure because it's not an arcane spell. It's a divine spell. So, kind of cheating, in my opinion. I think that spell failure should be spell failure, frankly. Because just because you're, you're talking to a deity doesn't mean that you don't have to talk or gesture. That was the whole fucking point of the natural spell. Remember the one we talked about the other day for the druid? So again, why is a druid capable of picking this feat as they level up and being in full fucking plate mail and still casting his spells? That seems fucking weird. But again, I think you can do that in this game. I don't think there's any penalty for those guys. So know that that's an issue. Uh, again, it unlocks the entire category. So light armor unlocks the four different light armors. I think there might even be five in this game. But there's four in Kingmaker. So again, padded, leather, studded leather, chain shirt. For medium, it's hide, scale mail, chain mail, breastplate. For heavy, there's only three, as far as I know, and that's um, banded mail, half plate, and full plate. So again, that's what those give. Martial weapon proficiency and uh, single weapon proficiency, each one unlocks all the ones that's on that list. Where exotic weapon proficiency, which we talked about before, is exotic and therefore when you get to it you have to pick a weapon just as a reminder so see this here that's why it opens up you have to say oh i want to be exotically trained in just the bastard sword and now you can use that without penalty well actually not even without penalty you can use it you can't wield anything you don't have proficiency in in this game but again look at that list it's a long list not being able to grab all of them by getting one feet kind of sucks but again i kind of understand it because they're so diverse they're so exotic is the idea that you know, swinging a falcata is completely different than swinging an elven curved blade, for example. So again, I kind of understand, at least for the simple and the martial, if you don't have them, again, a wizard I don't even think has this one. They have a very truncated list. Picking this up broadens the field for what you can equip. So again, is it necessary? No. Is it helpful? In some builds, yeah. Just picking up simple weapon proficiency is of value. Uh, but... I routinely will say, fuck it, just go with what they give you. Because, again, a wizard by themselves is awesome. You're not really using weapons. And the weapons they give you for being a wizard, I think, is like a dagger, a quarterstaff, and like a crossbow, I think, is your thing. Maybe a dart is in there, too. But uh, simple as fuck, but not the entire simple weapon proficiency list. So, more than enough to work with, is my point. Um, martial weapon proficiency, even better. And for some builds, there are some builds out there that only get simple weapon proficiency. Would I get martial weapon proficiency on them? Again, probably would. If they're already simple weapon proficient, that usually means that they could be a melee combatant in some way, shape, or form. And I probably want the better weapons, which is the martial weapons. And the fact that I pick one thing and I get all of that shit, or access to being able to pick up all that shit, is good enough for me. Shield proficiency, again, covers... Um, the ability to use all three of those shields, the bucklers, the light shields, and the heavy shields. Why they have it split into three separate categories, uh, I don't know, because I don't think that was a thing in Kingmaker. But again, in this game, I already showed you how I, in the background I can give you buckler proficiency. So again, shield proficiency would be better. Obviously, we include all three of those shields. Notice how this does not include tower shield proficiency, because, oh, look, right there. So again, it's a separate category. And again, notice how it has a prerequisite. You have to have shield proficiency to get it okay um so again a thing uh no um that's it that's it my god we've actually finished and it only took me how many years sorry i gotta open up my phone it tells me everything 
Oh, I forgot to press the timer. God damn it. Well, we'll figure it out when I upload the video. Uh, this is definitely long, so we're going to end it here. But know that this is not the last video. Remember, we still have stuff to talk about. The stuff that we will talk about next time, hopefully in one shot and done. I'll have to write it all down. We'll include all these weird feats that didn't fall under these categories of combats or spells or teamwork feats. That's not to say they won't be spell-oriented or combat-oriented. We've already gave an example for one. Another one that was missing from our list is one called Warrior Priest, and you won't get it as a fighter because, again, you don't cast divine spells. So, again, it feels like it's a spell feat because you have to have spells to access it, divine spells. It also feels like a fighter feat for what it does, or a combat feat for what it does. But, again, it doesn't fall on this list. So I'll talk about those in passing. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make myself a cleric or something like that so I can unlock all these different things. Like, it, it'll be a hybrid. It'll be a cleric level one, a wizard level one, a, a fucking druid level one. I'll, I'll dip into anything and everything, so I'm making sure I'm covering everything. Go through the whole list, write it down, all the new ones. And again, a lot of stuff that'll be like skill focus this or things like um, persuasive deft hands, etc. and so forth. These are ones that add flavor to your character. It's not to say they're bad. In fact, and, and many times I've included them in builds because there's some real uh, interesting things you can do, especially if you're doing like an intimidation build for the, your corn against mash type shit. Persuasive it buffs your persuasion checks. All of them, including intimidation. Uh, deceitful in buff, buffs your persuasion and trickery checks. Again, all your persuasion checks, including your intimidation. So again, there's plenty of fun to be had here for jacking up a specific skill or two. Again, would I grab them? Depends on the build. Sometimes, uh, like the uh, skill focus ones that buff up your mobility, again, are extremely viable for people that are using mounts. That's another thing we haven't talked about because mounted combat is not considered a combat feat for some reason. But again, I'll unlock those and show those to you as well. And talk about how this would be an example where it's something that would give a bonus to mobility could be of value for your character. You know, being a, a halfling that gets a bonus to mobilities just for free. This would be something that would add value to your character. Getting a background feat that unlocks mobility for the green check mark as a class skill would be of value for a mounted character if you don't already get mobility. So again, we'll talk about that in the last video. But with that, my name is Brother Mutant. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think of these feats. Is there another trick, something that I forgot, something that I said wrong? Certainly post that down below. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.